Um, I'm part of the team from the Google News Lab that works with journalists in newsrooms and in their homes, as the case may be today, um, all around the world. I'm part of the US team. And so we work with journalists to introduce new tech tools, um, new tech tools and uh, things to make your job a little bit easier. There's also a business team that works with publishers to help develop new revenue streams and grow subscriptions. And then there's a tech team that helps make a website run a little faster. Um, they develop new innovative tools for journalists, like Backlight, an AI tool that we're going to look at um, in this session. It's really great. It's an AI tool that helps process massive amounts of documents and helps you search them. And um, Google also funds an innovation challenge, and that's open right now for applications. And the theme this year is diversity, equity, and inclusion. We have a great idea um, to help with um, uh, making news coverage or newsrooms um, or business models more inclusive. Be sure to apply. Um, we also have a training website, e.co slash news training. And it has all of the tools we're going to talk about today and dozens more, actually. And they're wonderful because they're grouped into little five to ten minute modules. So you can just look through in your own case and look at what you've been looking at or discover new things like um, uh, Google Earth Studio, which allows you to fly from place to place like a drone um, using aerial and satellite imagery. So lots of cool stuff to explore there. There's also a brand new lesson on machine learning. Just wait a second. You can open the tab now and just uh, take a quick look. You'll just mark it for later. Um, and I've also put a link in the comment section about the tools that we're going to be looking at today. There's some resources. So um, let's check that out. So let's look at some tools for election coverage. Um, Google has a whole page devoted to all of the things that the company is going to support on uh, election coverage and um, Twitter engagement. It's at elections.google. And uh, you can see all these things, for engaging voters, protecting elections, and so on. We also have a collaboration with the Publishers Election Lab, which organizes newsrooms and journalists to help um, cover polling places. And this year it's going to be the, the voting process because a lot of it will be built by mail. And um, speaking of a post look, real time um, on voting day. So, Go to um, election land. Uh, the link is in the document if you'd like to be part of that. We also have a co collaboration with First Draft, and they are sort of the standard bearers of um, protecting disinformation and misinformation. And uh, the F word in this case, if you're wondering, stands for fake, which has become sort of a dirty word. Um, um, we're trying to um, get everybody to the real news. There's also a Google program on which we're covering elections. We're doing sensitive investigations, and you feel vulnerable to attack or remove you. Um, you feel like you're vulnerable. There's an advanced protection program that um, gives you an extra layer of security. So check that out as well. Turns out that two of the major newsrooms in the United States. We're having their servers mirrored in China for five years before they found out, and it likely originated from a phishing attempt. So take a look at this phishing page, c.co slash phishing page. Take it, fail it, and learn from it because um, it will really help you tighten up your security. Okay, so the election is coming. I know it's hard to think about um, at the moment with all that's going on, but um, all these big stories that are happening are also going to feed into the election. So let's take a look about how we can cover issues and candidates. Um, there is a, a, a wonderful site called Forest.studio, and they have um, templates there for you to make cards that can introduce issues for people um, and they're all customizable very easy to create and the fun thing is that they're affordable and they're interactive 
And so when you put anything that's interactive on your site, it's very engaging to um, the, the people who are coming looking for information. It also builds trust when you're putting these interactive because um, when they're dealing with data visualization and they can play with the data themselves, um, they will trust the conclusions that they get. So it's wonderful for um, engagement and for building trust. I just wanted to point out the FEC site has wonderful um, accessible information that has some of its own data visualizations and also notifications whenever a candidate submits a new filing. So it's a great way to track um, campaign donations. And it just comes right to your inbox. Um, you can also download the data from this site and use it in your own data visualizations. And we'll, we'll take a look at some of those data visualizations later. But let's start with advanced search. And that's sort of how we, we start a lot of our reporting, right? With a simple search. And I'm sure we've all done a lot of searching and research. But I wanted to show you some tools today that um, that go overlooked sometimes um, or a little bit hard to find. Um, but the number one tool for verifying images, um, checking out information you might see on social media or user generated content is the reverse image search. So you can actually drag and drop an image right onto the search bar. You can paste an image URL or upload one um, if you've got an image on your computer. But even um, easier, you can check out the image right from your computer just by doing a right click. And I'll show you a link. So here's an image um, that purports to be the protest here in California turning a tear gas canister with a ton of traffic. So, great technique. Um, but after having been based in Hong Kong, I it didn't look quite like me. You know, the graffiti is English, um, just something about it. So if you do a two-finger click, which is a master pro on your touchpad, or a right click, this menu box will pop up and Click here on this option, search Google for image. When you do that, it will take you to all the visually similar images that have been uploaded before. So you can investigate those a little bit. And when you do, you might find that this indeed is a picture of a protester, but it's not in Hong Kong and it's not in the United States right now. Um, it's taken in France in 2016 during the election season. So this is important because um, in times of conflict during demonstrations, um, a lot of images get recycled and repurposed and sometimes manipulated in a, a way that is out of context or feeds somebody's agenda. So this is a really quick way to check out those images and um, make sure that they are legitimate. Here's another feature of um, Google search that you may or may not know about. You can add search refinements to your search in order to get more particular and specific results. Um, we are going to go through some of these, but don't worry, you don't have to remember them all right now. It's uh, built into the Google search page is this nice little pop up menu that brings you to a cheat sheet. So the settings and an advanced search that will bring you to this template. That you can fill out, and it will also show you how to just type it into the search box, like I'm about to show you now. And uh, once you do it a few times, it just becomes muscle memory and quite easy. Um, so, here's an example you can find the last page of the version of the site using cache colon, and then you look at a particular site like uh, the cbc.gov. Um, or you can find um, even older versions of the site um, even archive.org. It takes you to the Wayback Machine. This is not a Google tool, um, but it's incredibly useful. Um, there's a recent story. Um, and then during reporting, you're trying to find a website that should change or has even been deleted. You can go to archive.org, so it's the Wayback Machine, and you can sort of see. Um, the graph 
every day with that account or website and content that was archived on the way back to school. And so this came into play in the recent story when the, um, there was a new assistant secretary of health and human services appointed. And it turns out she had removed um, a lot of the previous things, some of which was controversial. So an enterprising reporter went to the way back to school and um, looked at some of the previous tweets and did a story about what people needed and why. So that's a recent real life um, tweet of the way back to school. Um, you can also see deleted tweets of political figures with this tool from Twitter in the Sunlight Foundation called Color Look. And um, it tracks all of Congress members and every tweet they believe. Sometimes it's just a typo or reframing something. Um, Twitter doesn't allow you to edit, you have to delete it right over. But sometimes you get those middle of the night, oops, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Tweet. Um, that they erase the next amendment. So that's the system. Um, another way to send these audit tweets of um, the figures or influencers is a commenter, which is a tool from the Indiana University. And it does an audit of the Twitter account, which is my own, and it's color coding. Red is to signify a plot, so someone who that uh, plot like the tweeting. Um, and they classify that as tweeting more than 75 times a day. The tweeting around the clock, um, even if they're really hard to get to the tweeting. And then there's another one by Indiana University called Twitter, which uh, tracks the spread of information across Twitter. So if you're trying to look at a piece of um, a viral tweet, you can put in the account of the text and it will actually show you where the tweet originated and how it spread. So why do you tell quickly and so you can also see the plot like behavior kind of thing. So that's what we're proposing up from the tweet that's in the university. Um, to search Twitter, we find that TweetDeck is quite useful. And you can even limit it to geographic area. Um, so say we want to find people are tweeting from in front of the White House. Um, you can limit it to that and then go in. Um, and you can also search that on your um, well, through the search assignments. You can do site colon twitter.com um, and put in a hashtag so you can see what that is. This is another fun tool. Um, it, it shows it's from the pudding dot tool, which says really cool data visualization. And it shows what is Congress tweeting about over the past month, or week, or year. And so you can look up any Congress member and examine their tweets and where they fall in the spectrum um, and average. So you can see that I had a press release in Massachusetts, speaks a whole lot more about social issues than the average one just conference. And so you can look at your own Congress member and just sort of track what they're tweeting and how they're tweeting and how it relates to the average Congress member. Um, this is for a current data journal, and you're only looking for data sets. Google has a specialized site called Data Set and you can go there and input a search form, and then it will only be data sets. So um, the XLS one, the PDF, or it will take you to sites that also aggregate those kinds of data sets. So that saves a whole lot of time to get them through. Um, you can also search just by file type, colon, um, and then CSV or XLS, and that will also get this kind of kinds of data sets. Um, but if you go here, it's even faster. And this, um, this is for election background and um, the source finding. Google Scholar can be really useful. It's a site that's dedicated only to um, searching academic papers and court papers and specimens. So 
research by article um, in academic publications, um, in research by case law, and you can um, set your parameters like case, like court, federal court, or local court. It's incredibly easy. So, say for example, you're writing a lot about book by mail before the election, and you want to see what the precedents are in your state. You can limit it to where you are or compare it to several federal cases and look at the most recent precedents and so on. So Google Scholar is a nice targeted way to find that kind of academic and legal information. Alert. So when you find a search um, that you're looking for, you can set up an alert. And you can even do quite complicated searches. So this is a way of combining some of the search assignments that I refer to. You can just search something in a title or in a certain site or domain and a certain kind of file type. So this would be looking for documents that have secret, that's have secret in the title um, on a government website. And instead of going back and looking yourself every day, you can just set the alert to tell you real time get notified once a day, once a week, digest, and so on, in whatever language, language of the place that you listen to. Um, some of them set up and work with their own byline or the name of someone that they're covering. And it's great for deep coverage. This is sort of like a little personalized newsletter that comes straight to your inbox every day. Okay, now we're going to get to um, backlight which is this AI tool that I mentioned at the very beginning. Um, this was developed by, um, by a team of engineers who helped journalists specifically quickly search through thousands of documents. So um, I know that we've all done FOIA requests and gotten huge amounts of um, information back, and then you have to process it. So Backlight was designed to handle all sorts of different um, file types. PDFs, images, you can search text inside a photo, emails, and this is new, um, audio. So you can upload an MP3 file to Backlight and it will transcribe it for you and then it becomes searchable and relatable to all the other documents that you've got in your collection. So the tool is still in beta. And we're um, inviting data testers to come use it and give feedback. And people like to do it. Um, apply here. Go to bluego slash get backlight. And make sure that it's all in one place. And it will take you to a form and you can apply to be a data tester. And um, it's, it's incredibly powerful. I just want to do a um, What kind of information you can find? So this was um, this is what it looks like. It's a very simple interface. Um, you can just add documents from your computer to your Google Drive, and um, so this is a collection of documents that the House Intelligence Committee released. Um, about Lev Karnoff, who was a Ukrainian fixer. Um, he was asked to, as you can see on this handwritten note, he was asked to get Zelensky um, to announce that the Biden case would be investigated. So this is probably a note that he was taking as he was um, talking on the phone and he was calling. And so the House Intelligence Committee um, released those notes. And those handwritten notes are searchable. Um, but they also release some screenshots of text back and forth with Rudy Giuliani, it looks like. And you can see that they're trading um, screenshots and documents. And so this is really tiny on the screen, but it's a photo of a passport. So it's a, a photo of a passport inside a text message inside a screenshot. So you can search them. And so I actually blew it up to find the name for the demonstration purposes. His name is Victor, which in um, Russian transliteration is like this. 
this is beautiful. I mean, if, if, if you um, if you said in Cyrillic, you know, Cyrillic alphabet or Chinese, it, it can handle anything, any language because it's optical character recognition. So I type in the name and it will search for it. There it is, highlight it, click on it, and it takes you to the picture. It searches within a photograph to the text. So I think that is um, incredibly powerful. Um, so there are collections on Backlight that you can play with to learn about it and the files of Martin Luther King, um, JFPSF, Nathan Records, um, but it's quite straightforward. And once you get approval, um, just go ahead and email us if you'd like us to do a, a walkthrough with your investigators. That is backlight. Um, let me get back to some of the other tools. Okay. Um, Google also has a site that's designed to help you with your um, fact checking. It's misinformation, disinformation is such uh, an important issue right now. And so, c.co slash fact checking aggregates other and so you can just type in um, the claim that you're investigating and it will tell you what other um, approved organizations um, who achieve certain standards have found on, on the fact check. So one stop shopping for fact check. Okay, this takes us to Google Trends, which are going to be really important um, for election coverage. The nice thing about Google Trends and Google Search, um, when people are looking for answers, they're a lot more honest with their computers than they are with even their doctors or best friends. Um, and so you can see what kind of questions that people ask their search engines. Um, and so Google Trends can identify trends in person, not certainly identifiable, um, but in the aggregate. And they can do it in a quite detailed way. This is um, a graph of the search interest during the Miami Democratic debate. And you can see minute by minute what is catching people's attention and sparking their curiosity. You can see Marianne Williamson, who is relatively unknown at that, that second debate, rising to the top of search and this is an example of Google Trends data that you can put in a Flourish template and make your own site. Let me show you a little bit of that in a bit. Um, you can look at Google Trends on the web, what people are searching for, um, even shopping trends, but you can also see what they're watching on YouTube. And so this is from the 2016 election, and uh, it's just a visualization of the search interest um, especially in swing states on YouTube right before the election. The other nice thing about Google Trends um, is that you can see what people are, are asking about the candidates, about the issues. There's a lot of where to vote, how do I vote, where do I get an absentee ballot. But this is one of my favorite examples because these are the questions asked the day after the Brexit vote. I was wondering, what is the EU? So when you see these, these questions popping up um, in the election season, um, some newsrooms use them as inspiration for explainers. So we have a chance to uh, explain those questions before it's too late. So let's take a look at the Google Trends page. You can go to trends.google.com and um, you click on this little gender the menu here. You can um, go up to, um, you can find all the different tools. And this is one of my favorite tools. You can compare search terms. And um, the other day I was looking to see what are people more concerned about now? Coronavirus versus protests. And you can see that there's a point where um, interest and curiosity about um, the protests 
over six. You compare that to all the body. So you can compare up to five terms in this um, search bar. And it will tell you whether it's a search term or a search topic. You can search um, just the web or YouTube, like I showed you, images, or even Google Shopping Center, which is great if you're covering YouTube or um, Google Shopping. Um, and one thing to note is that these are not absolute numbers of searches, they're relativized, they're indexed and normalized. So um, we're really looking at the acceleration in interest uh, relative to all the searches for that topic in that time. You can also search all around the world, just in the United States, or you can drill down um, all the way down to the country level. Um, you can look at the last um, English, seven days, different categories. And here's my favorite part. I'm actually going to just jump out and show you. Um, my favorite part is that once you find a search that you like, you can download it and um, play with that data. So before I go into that, I'm going to show you, um, this is an example I made of the, some of the vice presidents and prospects that are being considered and search interest in them. And um, you can actually scroll down and see by map where in the country people are most interested in which um, political candidate or political prospect. Um, you know, lots of interest, obviously, in any British are in, in you know, Minnesota and so on. And then you can, um, you can drill down into your, so say, section, so you can get more detailed information. In any of these maps or charts that are on the page that you make, and then downloadable. Um, here's the embed code if you want to click on that and get it to the embed code to put it right on the website. Or you can share it with social media. This that graph right here. Um, but th let's take a look about how you can play with a customized search. So click on the arrow. It downloads a CSV file, and then you can drop that into a spreadsheet. And then um, I wanted to show you Square Studio, which has all these wonderful templates that you can play with. And you've got your kind of hard charts and um, maps, scatter plots. And now they're getting really elegant here. Um, there's the cards that we were talking about earlier really, at the very beginning, the Kennedy cards. Um, it's just great for survey data um, or to show how the uh, elections turned out. But anyway, let's go back to here's an example of a bar chart race, which you've probably seen all over social media lately. It's been really popular. So um, to make that, I'm just going to show you the preview with the data that we just did. So that's what it's going to look like when it's finished. But what you do is you go to that and click on that um, bar chart template, and it will show you a preview of the data and what it should look like. Let's go back to their example. So it gives you a preview, it shows you uh, what it should look like, and then you take your spreadsheet and you upload it here. And it will look like this. And sometimes the data needs to be pivoted to match the template, but if you don't know how to do pivot tables, don't worry, because watch this, look here in this little corner. It will pivot it for you. That's such a great feature. And then you can, um, in the preview, you can change the bar colors, the labels, you can customize it all sorts of different ways. And then you can publish it or, or um, download it and use it on your website. So um, it's a lot of fun, it's animated, um, and it's, most importantly, it's customizable. So that data is up to date. So you can play with the trends and 
make any sort of, um, of visualization. Um, you can take the ones that they offer on the page, or you can make your own like this. Okay. And I know that I'm going through a lot of this very quickly, but if you'd like to have um, individualized sessions with your news group, just email us, and we'll do a special session just for you and your um, and your colleagues on how to get into this more deeply. And we are going to be offering them on these um, occasional sessions as well. Um, another thing that you can find on the trends page are real-time trends. So you can go to this little hamburger bar and hamburger menu and click on trending searches. And you can see what people are searching for in the last 24 hours. What are the most popular stories? And a lot of newsrooms use this in their morning meetings. Like, what's trending? What are people talking about? Um, what is grabbing people's interest? You can also use this to look at the rhythm of search. So this is just an example from Hartford, Connecticut. And you can see that there was a peak in search every day at 6 in the morning. So if you're on the website, running the website, you want to make sure you have fresh content uh, before that peak. Well, people are waking up and finding out what's happening in them. Another wonderful thing to get ready for the elections on the trends page, um, there is a dedicated page for each party, for the Democratic primaries and for the Republicans. And um, it's got all sorts of information about what, what people are searching for, um, and where which issues are most popular in which areas. Um, the trends page also has dedicated um, dedicated pages for um, coronavirus right now. And here is the trends page, and here's a new addition for the protest for racial equality and justice. And um, you can see what people are searching for, where, in different parts of the country, and so on. So the trends team does put out a daily newsletter highlighting what has been the most um, popular searches, and those are a great cheat sheet. So um, we will have the links, um, and you can sign up for that. You just email me mfarlaygoogle.com, and I'll make sure you get signed up if you want to. Another thing about trends is they do make uh, data sets available on the GitHub Google Trends data store. So that's available to look at and to download. And, um, they have fun things sometimes, like the most popular Halloween costumes by states, or most popular Thanksgiving dishes, uh, and so on. And the really wonderful secret about Google Trends is there's a whole trends team that is willing to work with their newsroom on special projects. If you can't find the information you're looking for on that um, public facing site, go ahead and contact them at newslabtrends at google.com and um, we'll be happy to work with you on special projects. All right, I did a sneak preview of the visualization with this racing bar chart with the VP process. Um, I'm going to show you something a little bit simpler as well. This is data gift makers. And it's a very simple template. All you have to do is put in the, um, the categories, choose your colors, and put in the values, and bang, you've got a really um, fun, colorful, animated uh, chart that you can just pop on social media. It's a great way to catch people's attention and have them click through to find out the rest of the story. Well, sometimes it just tells the story in itself. Here's an example. I call it the um, lollipop tree. Um, uh, this is just who's leading in the polls from last October. So, great way to just pop up that information, grab people's attention. And then you'll want to check out Source Studio with those templates, Source.studio. And the Google News Lab is subsidizing free enterprise memberships for newsrooms which gives you a little bit more privacy, a little bit more uh, broader capability. And there's um, all sorts of ways that they suggest to help you visualize election data. There's the cards. 
for the sodium um, photo sliders, which are great for before and after. This is showing um, how counties flipped between the 2012 and 2016 elections, but you can imagine all sorts of uses for the photo slider, you know, before and after um, the COVID lockdown, before and after the wildfires. Okay, so you've done all of this hard work getting ready for the elections, and um, election day is coming. And how do you show the results? It's going to be a little bit stretched out this year, I suspect, because of all of the voting by mail that may happen. But um, here's a nice little widget that you can use on your website uh, to show voters where to go to vote. Um, and it's with the Voting Information Project. It's a voting information tool where people put in their address and when they get a map of where to vote, um, what the, this is what it would look like. And it was just election day here in Maryland for the state primary. So where the polling places are, what the hours are, um, and how to get there. You put in your own information and give you a map. The nice thing about this widget is that it's customizable. So you can put in your own um, company logo, your website um, colors and things, and make it your own. And it's free. Um, you just go to this URL. You can also use Google Maps to um, map polling locations. You can put in your own information. Um, and then to examine the results, uh, I will show you some of those templates for sure. Um, and the more interactive you can make them, um, the more interesting uh, to, uh, to your users. Here's an example of how you can use uh, one of these storage templates. Um, this is just showing uh, a break of the Congress right now. And a breakdown of Congress, and you can sort it by whatever you have in your spreadsheet, whether it's gender, which party has more women or men, what is the racial makeup of each party, and so on. So um, you can just sort by whatever you have in your spreadsheet. Um, you can do it by who's voting for which issues, or which state's elected, um, how, many, how many members in each party, and so on. So those are some tools that are designed to help um, cover the election, and obviously you can use them for, for all sorts of uh, news coverage, whether it's covering the protests, whether it's covering coronavirus, whatever the big story happens to be. But um, I'm going to show you how you can use them for you know, political coverage in the coming months. So if you have any training questions, if you'd like a training for your news and your news group, Contact us at newslabsupport.com. If you'd like to be subscribed to the TIMS newsletter, that's where you can find that information as well. And you can contact me directly if you would like to um, set up a hangout training for your, your colleagues. Um, and we're going to be doing um, more of these trainings. Live, but we're also going to do like a summer boot camp um, where there's a training a day and a day, days of training. Um, but in the meantime, we can go to this website and just fill up anytime the news training website. Great. So thanks very much for taking the time to join us today. Um, I hope it was useful. And if you find some really interesting ways to use these tools, please share them with us. And we'd like to show them with others. Thanks again, Maggie Farley, for Google News Lab.